G'day, it's Craig here, and I'm gonna walk you through our comprehensive range of multimeters. These are fantastic for measuring any sort of circuit or any sort of voltage. You can't go without them. First off, our pocket meter. Great, nice and handy, compact. We have our famous watt meter with Anderson plugs. Just click it in and you can read it hands free. And last but not least, we've got our clamp meter, which does absolutely everything. You can't get much better than that. Okay, so why is having a multimeter so important? Well, anyone that has any sort of 12 volt system or needs to measure any sort of voltage whatsoever, they are so important. I mean, if you don't know what's going on, you don't know how to install something, you don't know what the voltage readings are, these are an absolute must. I mean, when you go and install a 12 volt system, you can check your measurements, you know you got everything right. If something's not working, you can get the diagnostic side of it and check out why it's not working. I mean, anytime you need to read any sort of current, any sort of voltage, any sort of continuity, you've got a multimeter here and we've got one to suit every application. Okay, first off, I wanna show off our famous watt meter. Now, this is a ripper for anyone that uses any sort of connection with Anderson plugs. It's basically a hands-free multimeter. So any quick reference you need to do for any sort of voltage, current, and watts, this is your baby. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you a couple of quick examples of how to use the watt meter. So we'll notice on our multimeter, you have a load and you have a source. So the way we have to look at it is that the source is anything coming into the meter and we have the load, anything coming out. So any power supply coming in is the source and anything drawing current away from it is the load. So don't forget that when you connect it up. Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick example now how the situation would work with a solar panel, which is probably our most common application to be able to connect your watt meter up and see what your solar panel is actually putting out and going into your battery bank. So it's as easy as this. So we'll grab our solar panel lead now that is going to be our source because we've got the power coming in. So a simple clip in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect from the load side because the battery's then our load, connect it up here. So as you can see there, we have all our readings of what's happening from our solar panel as you can see on the screen there. Okay, I'm gonna show you the next example now, which I'm gonna hook up to an oven. So the oven is then gonna be the load and the battery is going to be the source and it's just as simple as swapping around the other way and I'll give you a quick example of how it does that. So I'm going to connect into our oven and the oven is now the load. And the battery is now the source because that's what's supplying the power. We can quickly see that our oven starts to draw current from our battery. It doesn't get much easier than that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the screen in more detail on how it functions and what the readings actually mean to make sense. All right, as you can see over in this corner, we have our amperage. In this corner, we have our voltage. In the far corner down here, we have our wattage. And over on this screen that flicks here, the data will change. So first off, if we have a quick look here, we have our time. We have the total amp hours. We have your voltage minimum. We have your kilowatt hours, and we have the amp hour um, peak and with the wattage peak. Okay, so not only does it function as a great data logger over a period of time, but imagine how handy it's gonna come. You've been down the beach all morning, or you might've been on a four wheel drive trip during the day. You wanna see how much your solar panels put into your batteries. Maybe you've had an oven going all morning while you're waiting for your lunch. You wanna see how much power's been consumed. The data logger is absolutely fantastic for that, and it's the best way to monitor what your system's been using. Not only that, I mean, I don't know if you can tell by there, but look how great the display is. You can see this in the middle of a sunny day without a problem whatsoever, and obviously at night, it is so easy to read. So I can't rate these enough, they are awesome. Okay, next up is our pocket multimeter. And we don't call it a pocket multimeter for nothing. I mean, this thing is fantastic. For the price point, you can't go past it. You can take it absolutely anywhere. As I said, you can put it in your pocket, you can keep it in your glove box, you can keep it in your center console. So it's a great little multimeter if you quickly wanna check your voltages, battery voltages, anything for a little handy reference. It takes up such a little amount of room. It's ready to be used every single time. It's a great little multimeter. Let's take a look at some of its features. Okay, so the leads are stored nicely in the unit itself. Let's quickly pull them out. It's as easy as that. Out they come. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what all the functions on the dial is and how it all works. Let's go. Okay, so first up is our DC voltage. So this is gonna be the most common uh, scale that you're gonna be using on the multimeter, but I'll just go through a couple of the features with this. So you can always tell it'll have the line at the top and the three dots at the bottom, and that's always DC voltage. 
But if you're not too sure, it does actually say up here in the top uh, corner. So that's always one way to be sure. Now the range, you can actually change uh, where your decimal point's gonna sit in the range for different readings that you're after. So that's quite a handy little feature to have as well. Now, I also did wanna show you too, we also have a hold feature. So this is gonna come in really handy when you um, can't exactly see what you're at. If you're under a dashboard or working in your caravan or something like that, you can actually manage to press the hold button. And I'll just show you. So at the moment, I've got 13.3 volts in my battery. I can press the hold button, disconnect my power source. And as you can see, it's still got um, the 13.3 volts on there that I can reference my measurements. So that's a really, really handy feature to have. Okay, so next up we have AC voltage, but you've also got your AC symbol up the top there so you can actually know which one it is and it's the little wavy line there. And once again, you can change the range if you need to. Okay, next up we have these three wonderful little things here. So this is Ohm's continuity and diode testing. So even if you're into electronics, this is still a great little multimeter for you to have. So at the moment we're on Ohm's. Now this is the first time we can use the select button. So what we're gonna do is now we're going into a checking diodes. So you can see here the little symbol. And the next one after that we can put is continuity, which is really handy. You, you'll see the little sound symbol up there. And basically you'll know for sure, touching them together and you'll get that little ring. And we'll go into that a little bit later on. Okay, next up we have our microamps. Going one step further, we have our milliamps. So this multimeter has absolutely everything. And also, don't forget we have the off button, but it also turns itself off after a period of time anyway. So even if you forget to turn it off, it'll turn off and save your batteries. Alrighty, let's first show you how to measure DC voltage with our little pocket meter here. And it's quite easy to do. Uh, sometimes it's hard with, uh, without a helper, but sometimes you can find a little area where you can put the negative onto the back, black side of the battery. The positive is going to go onto the red side of the cable or the positive terminal. And that way you should be able to read what your voltage is. What have I got there? 12.78 volts. So there you go. That's how simple it is to read your battery voltage. And I'll just quickly show you something about reverse polarity too. Now, see how we've got a perfect 12.78 volts there? Look what happens when I switch the terminals around. So I'm gonna put the negative onto the positive terminal. And can you see that there? Can you see how I've got a minus sign in front of the, um, the voltage there? So that actually tells us, hey, it's around the wrong way, or it can actually determine if you've got the wiring around the wrong way. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna check a solar panel's voltage. And the beauty about this too, is we've got two black colored wires, so we don't know what's what. So that way we can use our multimeter and check what the polarity is for correct polarity or not. Let's go down and have a look. First off, let's have a quick look. So I've got two connected up. Okay, so we've got minus 29.4 volts. So that means that this one that I've got the negative on is actually my positive, because as you can see the minus sign before the, the numbers there, I'm just gonna quickly swap them over, put my positive there, put my negative there. Okay, so that's showing 29.4 volts and that's the correct polarity. And one really good thing about that is I'm gonna connect an Anderson terminal to that right now. So I know which one to connect and where to connect it. Next up is our digital clamp multimeter. This thing is awesome. I mean, you pay that little bit extra compared to the pocket meter, but this thing comes with a heavy duty case. It does just about every measurement you can think of. So if you're a, a camper, you've got a caravan, four wheel driver, anyone that needs to measure anything on their car, this thing is awesome. It'll also do your AC voltage as well. But the beauty of this is basically we have a built in DC clamp meter. So this means that you can actually check what sort of DC amps your solar panel's putting out, what your fridge might be drawing by current, just by simply clamping it over one of the single wires, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. I mean, it does so much, it's a must have for your 12 volt setup. Okay, so I'm now gonna show you exactly what this thing can do. Let's have a quick look, we'll turn the dial. So this is gonna be our AC or our DC clamp meter. So we have three settings here. We have the 600, the 400, and the 40 amps. It basically all does the same thing. It just depends on what you're actually reading. If you're reading the output of a big inverter or something small like what a fridge is using. So obviously the higher the number, the higher the amount of amps. But um, I'll just quickly show you another really awesome feature with that is with the clamp meter is the torch. So we've got a um, pressing the button here. And as you can see there, it'll actually light up. So when you're using the clamp meter, especially at night, clamp onto something, you can actually see what you're doing. So that comes in really, really handy just by pressing that on and off there like that. Now, 
underneath there, you can actually see you can change between your AC and your DC on all of these. So it's just a matter of pressing that, pressing that select button down there. And as you can see, I'm on AC at the moment. Give it another press. I'm on DC, and that way you can see all your readings using your AC, DC clamp meter. Okay, so I just want to point out here, as you can see, especially sometimes after doing uh, amperage readings, sometimes you'll get a little bit of interference and you might get a, um, something still on the meter itself. What you can actually press is the relative button here, and that'll actually cycle it back down to zero, like a set of scales would do. So that's another little handy feature, and you can use that on all the settings, um, having that relative button. So something to keep in mind, what a lot of multimeters won't do, this one will do it. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you how to use your clamp meter to do all your testing. Now, preferably what we want to do is always use a single earth cable. You can't use two cables together, like a twin core cable or something like that. It has to either be a power or an earth, and it is often better to use an earth cable. So what we'll do now is we'll quickly connect up the meter. And as you can see there, I've got a reading. Now, at the moment, I have the low beams on this vehicle, so you can see what's uh, slowly been drawn from there. I'll quickly flick the high beams on, and you can actually have a quick look at the difference it'll make. See that there? So that's a difference with high and low beams. I'll get the high beams off again. And there we go. And see the difference there? So another thing that will come in handy too is at the moment we do have everything switched off on this vehicle. And I've got a reading there still, which that means that something in this system is drawing power somewhere. So that's the beauty of having a multimeter and using this tool to diagnose what's going on. We need to look further in why this vehicle has got amperage when nothing's turned on. Okay, next up let's go to our voltage. And what I'll do is I'll plug our heavy duty probes in just to show you. So first off, we're going to go put our positive, our red lead in, which goes in the input there, as you can see. Next is our black lead, which goes in the common earth. Plug that in like that, and now we're ready to start doing AC and DC measurements. Now once again, it's so easy. By just clicking on your select, you can actually change between AC and DC. And also you can change the range of the voltage measurement that you need. So it will do it automatically, but for instance, it will move the decimal point across, which will come in really, really, really handy. And we'll just do a quick measurement now of this battery. Okay, as you can see here, so I've got my battery voltage reading. And once again, it's a matter of changing between AC or DC. So obviously I want it on DC, I'm measuring a 12 volt battery. Okay, so you can see I've got my battery voltage reading there. Now what I'm going to do, over here on the side, we've got a nice little blue button here. So that's our hold button. So the beauty of that, like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, if you're working somewhere confined or you can't read the reading on the meter itself, you can actually press that hold button. It'll store whatever reading you've taken at the time. So I'll just quickly show you. I'm going to take a quick snapshot of that one there. Okay, take off my probes. And as you can see, I've still got the voltage reading sitting there on my multimeter, so I can have a quick look at it if I couldn't get to it. It's a great little feature. Okay, so next up, and this is where this meter comes in really handy, we have our ohms. So as you can see down here, it lights up down in the bottom screen. Now, if you press the select button, we then go through to our continuity. As you can see, you've got your little audible bell tone there, and as I can press these, and I've got continuity, and I'll actually show you how to take a measurement with that later and how great that is. Press select again, and now we have diode measurement, which comes in really handy, especially if you're into electronics. And also capacitance as well for you um, electronics gurus out there as well. So that's something that's normally on a professional multimeter. How cool is it on this one here? Okay, so the same button that does the clamp meter torch also does the backlight LED button. So look at that. How good is that? You could see that anytime. So that comes in really handy, especially if you're gonna be using a multimeter at night time backlit LCD, that is awesome. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick continuity check here and I'll show you how easy it is to do. I've got a fuse box here and I've put a blown fuse in here and I wanna show you how easy it is to find without going through everything. So we're on continuity, we can hear the bell ring which means we've got a circuit. Now, if I test a couple of these here, this, okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Okay, so all of a sudden we've got no continuity. And what I'm testing for is on a standard automotive blade fuse, there's little metal tabs on the very top, makes it nice and easy to, to try and test. 
So if I pull this little fella out now, I can clearly see that that fuse is blown. I haven't had to dismantle anything or pull anything apart. So that's how good a continuity test is and how handy this multimeter is for checking things like that. Okay, so I've shown you how good continuity testing is for a diagnostic application, finding that the blown fuse. Now I'm gonna quickly show you an installation idea, how great it is to use this function for a situation like this. So what I've done is I'm gonna install this cable here, but on purposely I've not installed any coloring on these blacks. So I've got three black wires, so I wanna find out what's what. And for an example, I've got continuity on. You can hear my little beep. So see if I go green to green, you can hear that we can tell that obviously that's the wire. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna find this blue cable here. So if I go across, there we go, lucky glass. So I know I can put my blue terminal on that wire. So that's a good example of how you can use the continuity to test an installation problem where you don't know what an end of a cable is or if you've got a bare wire and you wanna find where it goes, it's a great idea to use this multimeter to find that out. Okay, next one on the scale is for your temperature measurement, so you can measure uh, centigrade or Fahrenheit temperature reading, and it does come with a set of probes here. So these are the same as what you'd put in the normal one. So just unplug your normal probes. Whack in these once again. Red goes into the input, the black goes into the earth, and there we go. We can start reading the temperature. Now you can just press select there if you um, want to go Fahrenheit or centigrade. But you know, this can come in so handy if you just want to know what the ambient temperature is, maybe the temperature of your fridge, temperature of your car. It's just a really handy feature to have in a multimeter of this size. So next up, we have Hertz. So if you want to measure a fre the frequency, especially of 240 volt, then obviously it comes in really handy. Next, we'll go to our non-contact line voltage. Now this is a really handy tool. If you ever want to determine if you've got power in a live wire, look at that. All you need to do, with the clamp meter, just touch the wire and it'll always tell you if it's active. So just in case you were gonna drill near it or put something down it or you know tie it down with something, at least you know, hey, be careful, this wire is live. Okay, so that covers our multimeter range. So whether you're after something small, compact, affordable, you can carry just about anywhere, keep in your glove box. Whether you need something that can measure an inline Anderson type connection, hands-free operation, or you wanna be able to measure absolutely everything with our ACDC clamp meter, we've got you covered. So head on over to the website, have a browse around, grab one, grab them all. That's all from me for now, cheers.